Two weeks after At the Hawks Well was performed in April 1916, um, two militias in Ireland <coughs> mounted an armed rebellion, which was known as the Easter Rising. And this was the beginning of the fight for Irish independence. So the rising itself was a failure. Um, they seized a few buildings in Dublin and they held them for a week and then eventually they had to surrender. But the public reaction to it started the fight for independence, which lasted for a number of years and involved a lot of violent conflict. Gates wrote Dreaming of the Bones in 1919, in the middle of all this. There was violence going on all over England. People were being killed in their homes. They were being shot in the streets. Police were being assassinated. He had no idea how long this was going to go on, or where it was going to end, or if it was going to end. Um, so in 1919, he takes a Japanese play by uh, Zayami called Nishikiji, which is based on a folk tale about two ghosts who died before they could complete their courtship and have been haunting each other ever since, and they meet a priest who marries them, and after that they can rest. Um, what Yeats does with this is he imagines it as a story about two figures from Irish mythology named Dermot and Dermorgula, who are supposed to have been responsible for inviting the English into Ireland in the first place and beginning the English colonization of Ireland. And they have been under a curse for 700 years because of that, and they are able to be with each other, but they can't touch each other. And they need somebody from Ireland, somebody who has grown up with the consequences of what they did to help them lift the curse. So on this night, a young man who's fought in the Easter Rising and is running from the police shows up where they're hunting, and this is what happens. Young man with a lantern comes this way. 
seems an arid fisher, for he wears the flannel bonnie and the cowhide shoe. He stumbles wearily and stumbling prays. Once more the birds cry in their loneliness, but now they wheel about her heads.
them, the cat-headed bird is crying out. The dreaming boats cry out because the night winds blow. Her head, 
from hand to slip in hand, the memory of their crime flows up between and drives them apart. The memory of crime? He took her from a husband's house, it may be. But does the penance for a passionate sin last for so many centuries? No, no. The man she chose, the man she was chosen by, cared little and cared little from whose house they fled towards amid the flight of arrows. Or that is a husband or a king's. And how if that were could all lack friends? On crowded roads or on unpeopled hill. Helen herself had opened wide the door with the night by night she dreams herself awake and gallows to her breast a dreaming man. What crime can stay so in the memory? What crime can keep apart the lips of lovers wandering and alone? Her king and her lover overthrown in battle by her husband, and for her sake and for his own, being blind and bitter and bitterly in love, he brought a foreign army from across the sea. You speak of Durban and Borgla, who brought the Norman in? Yes, yes. I spoke of that miserable, most accursed pair who sold their country into slavery, and yet they were not wholly miserable and accursed. If somebody of their own race I last would say, I have forgiven them. Oh, never. Never shall Dermot and Devorgula be forgiven. If someone of their own race forgave at last, lip would be pressed on lip. Oh, never. Never shall Dermot and Devorgula be forgiven. You have told your story well. So well, indeed, I could not help but fall into the mood and for a while believe that it was true, or half believe. But better push on now. The horizon to the east is growing bright. So here we're on the summit. I can see the Aran Islands, the Connemara Hills, the Galway in the breaking light. There too the enemy has toppled the roof and gable and torn the paneling from ancient rooms. What generations of old men had known like their own hands and children wondered at has boiled the troopers' porridge. That town had lain, but for the pair you would have in heart. Amid its gables and its battlements, like any old admired Italian town. For though we have neither coal nor iron ore to make us wealthy or corrupt the air, our country, if that crime were uncommitted, had been most beautiful. Why do you dare? Why do you gaze? Damn the temptation and the place! 